Good afternoon, everybody, and you're very, very welcome to the webinar today, which is an information session on the postgraduate opportunities that are available in the area of agricultural extension and innovation. Um, so what we're, we're going to do is, is explain to you and tell you about a number of different programs, including the one year full time master's program here in UCD, uh, two programs, a research program and a taught program that are in conjunction with Chagask and that are funded, uh, as well as opportunities for partial funding through Mokra and Skillsnet. So um, I'm joined in the background by colleagues and also by uh, some graduates and a current student from one of the programs, and they're going to share their experience with you. Um, if you've got any questions that you'd like to ask, please use the uh, Q&A uh, button at the bottom of your screen. Uh, my colleagues, uh, Professor Jim Kinsler and Dr. Sinead Flannery are on standby, ready to answer any questions that you have. Um, and also just to let you know that the webinar is being recorded. So if you know anybody who you know, we wasn't able to make it or who's interested, or if you want to rewatch it yourself, uh, it'll be available uh, through our website. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, welcome and introduce my colleague, Dr. Tomas Russell, and he's going to first explain the master's program in Ag Extension that is a one year taught program here in UCD. So welcome, Tomas. Thanks, Monica. And so I'll just load up my presentation here. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a very brief overview of our one year masters in agricultural extension innovation that we offer here in UCD uh, and a few different options available within that. So um, I'm going to give you a brief presentation and please, as Monica said, do um, put your questions in the Q&A if you have any specific questions on this. Okay, so uh, the masters in UCD, it's a full time, we have a, a few different options, but the main one is a full time option here in UCD. Uh, we also have a part-time and distance learning option, which is available to those that are currently working with farmers, and I'll explain that in a second. Uh, we also have uh, flexible options uh, in which you can do a postgraduate certificate, a postgraduate diploma, or the full master's degree in Ag Extension Innovation. And there's some funded opportunities, which Monica will discuss later on, and also some part-funded opportunities, which I'll briefly touch on. So I suppose, um, if we look at the structure of the program um, and maybe the focus of the program first, the focus of the program is very much around behavioural and social science. So how do we best support farmers uh, and look at advisory strategies and ensure that we can understand how we change farmer behaviour and work with farmers. So um, we'll touch a bit more on that later, but there's a very broad overview of the program. The one year program in UCD, it's a one year, full year, full one year talk program uh, run across three trimesters. So from September to August. So trimester one, you're working on modules here in UCD, trimester two, again, some more modules. And then the third trimester, you work on a research project, um, which is your minor thesis. Uh, as I said, it's full time here in UCD. It's built of 90 credits of academic modules, and this includes a 30 credit minor thesis. So this is a really important part of the, the master's, and it's one that you mainly focus on during the summer months uh, or the, uh, at the end of the year. There's also some placement opportunities available. So this year we have um, FDC on board and they provide some placement opportunities and um, also uh, with the ACA and um, previously we've had some placement opportunities with AHDB as well. And um, so there's always some placement opportunities to do your minor thesis with that we can discuss um, throughout the year in the programme. So just very, very briefly, um, what do you learn? So you can see the number of core modules on the program. They're all modules delivered here in UCD on campus. Um, agricultural extension innovation, project management, group approaches, understanding the family farm, design thinking for ag innovation, research methods, and a minor thesis. So all of the modules are very much focused on working with farmers, understanding uh, farmer behavior change, and how we can best support farmers. For the program here in UCD, there's a number of optional modules that you can do as well, and these vary across animal production modules, grassland, environmental, mental health, economics and sociology. And um, so you can pick up maybe modules that you haven't already picked up or areas of expertise that you wish to gain across that. Uh, the different types of career opportunities that come from this, a lot of the graduates end up working in advisory and uh, we graduate graduates working in media, education, sales finance, mediation, research and journalism. So generally any role 
where you'll be directly working with or helping or supporting farmers. So a huge variety of career opportunities from this program. But again, as I said, very much focused on working with farmers. So suppose this master's is really suitable for those who are interested in that, working with farmers who like talking with and, and supporting farmers. In terms of eligibility for the one-year master's here in UCD and also the grad cert and the grad diploma, you must have a minimum of a 2-2 degree in a range of academic qualifications. So this can be anything from education, life sciences, humanities, arts and business. Um, also applicants whose first language is not English must demonstrate English language proficiency. Um, and really important, probably most important for this master's program, that you have an interest and motivation in supporting farmer learning and decision making. I suppose that's that's critical for the program. So that's just a very brief overview of um, the one year full time. Um, we have a number of funded opportunities, as I said, which Monica will touch on later with the, the Chagas uh, program. And also we have um, a distance learning program with MOCRA Agricultural Skillnet. So for those that are actually working within the industry um, and are interested in doing the masters, you have the option to do our part-time distance learning program. So this is run over two years, uh, fully online, fully distance learning. And um, the criteria for that is that you must be in a role where you're actually working with farmers. So if someone is graduating or, and already have a job maybe within the industry, or someone decides that um, they would like to get a job and maybe do it part time, then you have the option of applying for that. Mocker Agricultural Skills Net supported up to the rate of 25 to 30%. So um, it's a very nice option for those that maybe don't want to commit to doing it full time, um, but would like to work as well as getting um, the master's programme. So what I might do now, again, as a very brief uh, overview of the programmes, and please do put in any questions and questions that you have into the chat box. Um, what I might do now is I'm going to introduce um, a graduate of this programme, Ryan Callan, um, who graduated in 2001, um, and I might just ask Ryan a bit about his experience. So, hi Ryan, thanks very much for joining us here today. Hi Tomas, glad to be here. Um, so <clears throat> Ryan, I might briefly start with just maybe a bit around your background, so um, maybe your education background, where you, come, where you came from, and then why you decided to do the Master's programme. Yeah, so I studied sustainable agriculture in uh, DKAT for four years and um, I come from a farming background and I saw, I suppose I did a small internship with an advisor as part of my college program and when I came out advisory was the route I was thinking at the time and I was looking up masters I wanted to go that next step to sort of bring myself to the next level I didn't feel fully ready just for that position yet and uh, this really appealed to me because I sort of was looking at Career, career options from an advisory or education point of view. So the, this master seemed like the next step for me. Brilliant. And Ryan, why the one-year master's in UCD? This was what was the motivation for that. Uh, as opposed to the two-year, the Walsh Fellowship, or, or like this one? Yeah, as opposed to the other options that are available, the distance learning options and funded options. Yeah, I, I was looking to get out into a sort of career soon as possible and personal circumstances meant that the one year in UCD suited me better than the two years with the placement uh, located elsewhere so it was mostly personal circumstances and I was sort of looking forward to getting up to UCD for that time but then <laughs> when I applied it was before COVID um, but thankfully I got to spend a few weeks then at the end just finishing off my thesis with a couple of friends up there so that was enjoyable too. Very good. And I suppose, Ryan, what, um, how do you think the Masters equipped you for maybe working with farmers and now for your current role? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I come from a farmer background, so I would have had a good knowledge sort of on Irish farming, but I found this really put a lot of theory into the stuff behind what I thought I knew, what stuff you had a good idea of already. Looking at the social science aspect, something I wouldn't have done before, and I found that very interesting. I sort of I think it made me a more uh, a more rounded uh, student and then through my sort of thesis then I was enjoying the research side of things and then that's just led me down a different path whereas to say I've decided to do a PhD now and that was mainly because my master sort of sparked that interest in research I didn't really thought I had. Yeah and I suppose for a lot of students that move uh, coming from maybe a life sciences background into the social and behavioral sciences a bit of a 
bit of a change um, and this master is very much focused on social and behavioral science. How did you find that move? Um, and how did you find the modules and the assignments and that on the program? I'm not saying it's like night and day, but it was a stark difference to what I was looking at. Um, but it was enjoyable because it was something different and new, but still very relevant to agriculture, if you get me. So it was always related back to farming and agriculture, which was why it was of interest to me. So I thought that was at the end. I really enjoyed that bit. Very good. Um, and maybe just a final question, Ryan, because I, I know we'll be, you'll be in the panel later on. Um, what advice would you give to any prospective people or students that are interested or considering this master's program? Um, if, if, well, I'd say go for it. I, I think it gives you a nice, it's, it's something different, it's something new. Um, to what most sort of undergrads would have coming from an agricultural background. Uh, I think it makes, as I said earlier, more rounded student. And uh, it's, it's these soft skills and people skills that I think will stand later on that there's not that many of them or will study coming from their background and I think it will stand to us later on. It does in life in general, but yeah, I think it's it's something different and yeah, I'd, I'd strongly advise to go for it. That's brilliant. Well, look, thanks very much for that, Ryan. Um, I'm going to hand back over to Monica now and I know you'll be back with us later on, Ryan, for, for a few questions. Hi, thanks, Tomas, and thanks, Ryan. Um, I'm going to briefly explain the uh, well, the Chagask funded opportunities that are uh, available and if you just bear with me for one moment. <laughs> Share my screen. Okay, so we have um, a range of opportunities. I mean, many of you who are tuning in will be very familiar with Chagask as the you know, public provider of agricultural advisory and education services. And um, we've had a collaborative program between UCD and Chagask in this area of agricultural extension and innovation going back to 2010. And it has gone from strength to strength in terms of, you know, it, it's something that's very attractive to the students, but it's also been a, a really good collaboration between ourselves and Chagask in, you know, looking at ways to improve how, uh, you know, how how farmers are supported with advice and with the adoption of innovation. Um, what makes the program also very attractive is uh, it's funded. So if you get a place on the one of the Chagas funded programs, uh, your fees and a monthly stipend are covered. Um, uh, the focus is very much on building and developing knowledge and skills for advisory work, competence in advisory work. I'd say the placement is a very attractive part of it as well. So for a large part of the, um, the masters, you would be placed within a Chagask advisory office or an agricultural college. Um, of course, because it is such an attractive option, it's also very competitive. There's a limited number of places and there's a lot more people would like to be on the program than there are places available. So for this, it is, uh, you know, it, it's competitive and there is an application process. And uh, some of you may have seen the link already for the application form, uh, but I have the link at the bottom, at the end of this presentation as well. You have to get your application in by the 27th of May. When the applications come in, uh, they are reviewed in terms of your eligibility. And if you're deemed to be you know, uh, suitable, uh, you'll be asked to do first a written assignment. And then depending on the outcome of the written assignment, a smaller number of people are then invited for interview. Um, so there are two different master's programs within this, and we'll refer to them as the research masters and the taught masters. Now, both masters involve taught modules and both masters involve research, but in one, there's more emphasis on the research and in the other, there's more emphasis on the taught programs. So the, the research masters, um, so I suppose the difference being for a research masters, you get, you have to submit a thesis for examination by an external and an internal examin examiner. Uh, and that is, I suppose, the, the, you know, the final sign off in getting your degree. Um, and it's called the Masters in Agricultural Innovation Support. 
all of the research topics uh, you, you, for this, you're not choosing your own research topic. There's 10 research topics have been uh, selected, but they have come out of proposals that have been put forward by staff in Chagask who are working with farmers. So these are issues that they would say are current challenges or opportunities that uh, something could be really done on. So they're very practical and they are uh, topics that you know staff within Chagask want answers on uh, that can actually help to improve how advisory and education programs are running. The structure is for this program is the first semester is spent in UCD doing a number of modules. So there's taught modules have to be done. They include you know, research methods, agricultural extension and innovation. And depending on your topic and depending on your background, you might take other optional modules. So you know, most people coming into this program will have a primary degree in agricultural science or something similar. So you might want to take other modules in maybe some of the social sciences to help with the research. Um, from January, you are on placement, you're either in an advisory office or an agricultural college, depending on the particular project. And while you're there, you know, you're getting exposure and you're learning from the staff there, uh, either in education or advisory. And you also, for your research, you have a supervisor from both UCD and Chagask. Um, so you, during your, you know, the 15 months on placement, you have to you know, conduct your research, uh, but you also have to support and get engaged, you know, learn about the day to day work in the office or the college. And um, we have a system of regular roundtable seminars. So over the period of the masters, there's four roundtables where you'll be presenting your progress and getting feedback from your peers and from all of the other supervisors involved in the program. Um, and you, you're expected at the end to present your research at uh, the National um, Knowledge Transfer Conference. And in some cases, people present at other conferences and take up other opportunities as well. So this year we have 10 projects uh, that have been identified and selected for the programme. So if you're interested in this programme, you need to choose your first, second and third preference, because say, for example, there's 10 people coming on the program, we can't, they won't all be working on one project. So depending on uh, where candidates are ranked uh, after the interview process, they may get their first choice or their second choice or their third choice. So uh, I won't, you know, you can read these yourself and, and of course, on the both the Chagask and the UCD website links, you'll be able to get a more detailed explanation of what these projects are about. But as you can see, there's a number of them are to do with, uh, you know, grass and environment and uh, particularly at the moment in terms of, you know, better you know, the use of clover, the use of lime um, and soil health on grassland farms. So they're, they're the ones that are in green. There's two of them in the education area, one looking at online learning strategies for apprenticeships in the horticulture area and the other on looking at how to attract and support a more diverse cohort of learners into Chagask further education uh, courses. Um, and then we have a couple of projects that are on issues that you know, are still very, very pertinent. They have been around for a while, but we haven't cracked them. Farm safety, succession and inheritance, and how to engage with part-time farmers. And then we have one project in the forestry area this year, which is to do with using e-learning um, within the, you know, how you use digital tools for forestry knowledge transfer. And we have a project from the Cumra Mountains, the Uplands. Uh, the Cumra Mountains have been involved in looking at better management of upland areas, but there's implications if you're, if you're trying to maximize the climate and the biodiversity services, how do you also uh, look at what impact that has on uh, farm management and farm incomes? So there's, as I said, there's a great range of projects this year. Um, your job, if you're interested, is to select your top three. And then on the application form, you have to answer some questions with regard to your preferred project. Um, so eligibility for a research master's, you do need to have a minimum of a 2-1 degree. 
in agricultural science or related. Um, for the top master's programs, a 2-2 is, you know, will, it will make you eligible, but you do need a 2-1 for a research um, master's. The other requirement is that you would meet the educational qualifications for the Farm Advisory Service registration with the Department of Agriculture, Forestry and the Marine. And it's up to you to check and ensure your eligibility there. Um, you must also have a, a full clean driving license. And if you meet all of those, the next biggest criterion is your interest and your motivation in you know, working with farmers, supporting farmer learning and decision making. Um, it's the passion for working with farmers is is ultimately the you know the critical thing that is looked for both in the written assignment and in the interview stage. Um, so if we look at the um, sorry, go back there, the taught masters, um, the taught masters program. Uh, is over two years. So I should have said the research master's program is over 21 months. The taught master's is two years and it's two years learning by doing the two years, uh, full two years are on placement in an advisory office. Um, it's uh, And there is a change from year one to year two. So year one, you, you know, you'd be in a particular office and maybe in a particular type of advisory situation and in the second year, you'll go somewhere different and have maybe a different type of enterprise to be working as an advisor on. Um, you get mentoring. There's a, a dedicated mentor for each student in the advisory office. You know, somebody who you'll work with all of the advisors, you know, within that office, but you will have one particular advisor who will mentor you. You have to complete 90 credits of academic modules of which the minor thesis is 30 credits. So say you have a, you know, you also have research to do, but it's 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 different, it's within those modules. Um, we see it's a mix of distance and blended. There are, you know, one or two modules where you may come to UCD for them, uh, but for the most part, the modules have been designed so that they relate to the work that you're doing and they can be done online. Um, and in, in the sense that, <clears> that <clears throat> you're learning by doing and you're actually using the the day-to-day -day work of the advisory office as the basis for projects and assignments that you have to do and there's very much here an emphasis on you reflecting on you know your own role and your own competence as an advisor uh, in terms of how you're relating with farmers um, even in terms of the diversity of farmers that you could be dealing with um, so there's an element of you know looking at your own ways of interacting and the skills that you're developing, also the ways of working with groups and uh, you know in terms of facilitating discussion groups and things like that, working in other using other skills and approaches and techniques in advisory work, and then also looking what we're getting you to do in in this masters is to reflect as well on the whole. Um, the ways in which advisory services are provided to farmers, the ways in which innovation is supported uh, in agriculture. And, you know, you're looking at challenging you to develop new thinking and new ideas and how it could be done better. Um, similarly, we have round tables at a regular level and you get to present, you know, work that you've done on assignments uh, to your peers. And you're also expected when you finish your um, thesis uh, to present that at the knowledge transfer conference. And the eligibility here, uh, it's very similar, except a 2-2 degree is acceptable for the top masters, uh, but you must also be eligible for FAS registration, uh, the full clean driving license, and again, the interest and motivation to support farmer learning. So um, I've both the UCD School of Agriculture and Food Science website and the Chagask website have all the details and the link to the application form. Um, so you, you, there should be no problem with finding further information there. So I'm going to now uh, invite 
Lisa O'Toole and Patrick Walsh to join me and I'm going to get them to tell you a little bit about their experience. So Lisa completed the research masters in 2021 and she is now teaching in the Kildalton Agricultural College. Uh, so maybe Lisa tell us a little bit about your current job in Kildalton. Thanks, Monica. Yeah, so at the moment, um, I'm teaching down here in Kildalton. So I suppose mainly um, the tillage modules at the moment, but I suppose you'd um, have classes in the day and then you're out in practicals um, as well. I suppose we teach from level five right up to um, WIT students, level seven and level eight. So there's a huge um, diversity of students that you'd be um, teaching with and dealing with on a one-to-one -one basis. So um, I love my role here currently. So I say, how does it feel to be um, a poacher turned gamekeeper? <laughs> yeah, it's quite surreal at first, but <laughs> you settle in fairly quickly. <laughs> and Lisa, you did the research masters. Um, what attracted you to that particular option? Yeah, so I would have done my undergraduate degree um, through WIT. And I suppose when I was coming up to finishing that, um, I knew I wasn't finished with education um, and I was hoping and willing to go on and do um, some more. So um, just through different careers days and talking to past students of the masters, um, I knew kind of what was involved in it and I was really um, interested in completing it. Um, so I suppose then the fact that it's such a unique masters that while you're also carrying out the research project, you're really gaining invaluable um, work experience um, in an advisory office or an education centre as well. So um, it's really an invaluable experience. OK, and tell us, what was your research on? So I would have looked at contract cropping agreements. So basically, that's the likes of tillage farmers growing a crop, maybe maize or fodder beet on contract for a livestock farmer. So I was looking at how we could encourage those more. Um, so I would have spoke to different farmers within those agreements and um, different advisors who were involved in those. And then I suppose um, key informants as well who are working within the industry um, in those as well. I even I spoke to a farmer um, in the UK who is working on one. So um, I suppose you make so many different contacts through the, the program itself as well. Okay. Uh, Ryan touched earlier on the change in coming from an agricultural science degree into doing something that's much more about you know, social arrangements and, you know, contract cropping, stuff like that. Um, was it much of a transition? Was it a challenge or how did you find that? Yeah, um, the first few months was definitely a challenge. I was glad to have the semester in UCD to try and get my head around it. I know for my undergrad thesis, I would have looked at earthworm population. So when we found out that I wasn't going out to the field with a shovel, I was <laughs> taken aback slightly. But um, no, definitely. And you're given all the support in UCD um, through the different modules. Um, it definitely takes probably a while to get your head around it. But once you pick it up, um, it's, um, it's no issue at all. OK, and tell us, where were you based for the duration of your uh, placement? So I was based in Port Leash Advisory Office. Um, so it's quite a mixed farming area. Obviously, I would have been um, under the supervision of Peter Doolan. He was a dry stock advisor, but it's very much a you're taken really under the wing of the whole office. I would have been involved in all the different enterprises and working with all the different advisors within the office as well. OK, um, I'll bring in Patrick now and then I, I come back uh, and I'll bring the two of you in together. Um, but Patrick, you to get. and Patrick, you're at that wonderful stage now where you're working on your thesis to finish and submit in August. <laughs> yeah, that's the stage I'm at now, I suppose. Yeah, I started in, I suppose, the September of 2020 there, right? So I'm coming to the end of my 24 months now in September. So it's all it's all uh, geared towards now to finishing the minor thesis now. Yeah. And Patrick, you're a little bit different in that you were already out for one year uh, before you came to do the master's. So maybe would you tell us your story? That's right. Yeah. Um, actually, I completed my uh, science degree in WIT as well. And I was in the same class as Lisa there. Um, but 
I, I applied for the masters, I suppose, because I, I felt myself I wasn't really ready to go into a job where dealing with farmers on a regular basis. And I kind of felt I needed a bit more to be competitive for the job too, in, in terms of that. So I suppose to stand out, I kind of felt like I needed a master's and I was looking at different ones. And I was kind of thinking I was going to do something more in the lines of working with farmers. So nothing like I had my technical degree, I suppose, from uh, from from WIT. And uh, I looked then, sure, the funded program with Chagas uh, really stood out to me, I suppose, because especially the tall part as well, because you, you get to do, as you said there, when you went through the slides, like a two year uh, play, a professional work, a professional work uh, experience, which is brilliant because uh, you're actually put into uh, given like a uh, responsibility with clients at that stage, uh, even though you're still, I suppose, under the umbrella of a UCD student, but definitely with the in the office, you get to you get to have a lot of responsibility as well. And I suppose the master's degree was always something I suppose was, re was relevant to the whole agri-food sector, I suppose, in my opinion, anyway, kind of uh, the master's, you can bring it anywhere. Um, but I suppose that year when I finished, I actually applied for the masters. And unfortunately, well, I got an interview, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't go well in the interview that day. And I knew I didn't do a good job. But I actually got on a panel then after the interview. If anyone wanted to drop out, but unfortunately, I suppose no one dropped out with the funded masters. But uh, then I went on. Then I actually got a role in Chagas after that on a contract basis. And because I, I wanted to work in that kind of area between advisor education anyway. So I said, maybe if I build up more experience uh, through the year and hopefully apply again the following summer, I get it. So uh, with different jobs and whatever, I, I, I eventually applied again and uh, I did better in the interview the second time around. So uh, I ended up getting it that time. So the, the, the funded part was really a big thing for me because uh, and, the, and the work and the professional work experience. So there were two things that really stood out to me. And that's why I kind of. I suppose I went that extra year without, uh, without being in the Masters to go out again, like, you know. I ha Patrick, when I was asking you to come on, I hadn't, I had forgotten that you had done that, but it's actually a very good, um, you know, just to highlight that often people come back, you know, might not get accepted one year and do come back the second year and end up doing really, really well. So, you know, don't... Um, I suppose it's by way of encouragement uh, to say, and to say, well done for, for doing that. So... Patrick, you were in was it Middleton in first year and Nace in second year. Yeah, so I was in, uh, I suppose, a dairy, I suppose, a mainly dairy area being Middleton in County Cork for my first year. So I was working with a girl, she was my mentor, Liz Duffy down there. So she was my mentor. But as Lisa said there as well, you're kind of taken in, I suppose, by all the advisors in the office. So it was mainly dairy advisors, but I got to see a little bit of dry stock as well and some tillage down there as well. So you're kind of, you're kind of, you don't feel pressure just to be work with your own mentor I suppose she's always there uh, for any questions and everything but I suppose you're, you're, you're always getting experience of other things as well with all the advice in the office so I was there from September to September 21 and then September 21 till now and, uh, and the end I, I'm, I'm in Nace here in Kildare at the moment working with uh, a sheep and beef advisor Rachel Taylor so um, I'm getting to experience different different it's a different type of client too I suppose if you want to look at it that way as well um different obviously the dairy uh, dairy end is different as well but like with the top masters i suppose uh, over the two years you get to you get to see so much uh, from different enterprises and stuff it's really it's really great that way and professional work experience like you know and in terms of i suppose processing and making sense of that experience um how have you found the academic side has it been a good opportunity to make sense yeah 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 i suppose it's different than what tomas has gone through there what, what you'd be doing on the, maybe the one year full time i suppose i'm trying to keep down um my suppose, responsibilities with chagas as well as I'm, I'm a student with them and they expect me obviously to work monday to friday nine to five i suppose as well and have and do my job that way but i suppose you have to prioritize ucd work as well and get a good i suppose in the in the early stages the balance between work and maybe college was a bit was a bit lopsided maybe i was maybe really eager to get into the job and stuff but then you kind of take a step back and realize what what you're actually doing and you're doing the you're doing the masters like and i suppose what's different on the taught one as well you're always kind of doing reflective modules as well so that kind of helps help you as well and i suppose with the modules just to say like all the modules kind of reflect back to the work you're doing as well i suppose on the on the on the funded masters with chagas because it's all real life problems you're working with on the modules and have to get to experience them on the placement as well it's probably an added bonus like you know Okay, yes. Well, I'll tell you what I might do is I might bring back uh, Ryan and Lisa and Tomas and maybe make this more of a, a, a panel uh, discussion at this stage, because some of you might want to pick up on some of those points. Um, 
Uh, Tomas, are you coming back in there? Or are we... <laughs> um, I, and I suppose putting it back to you, you know, there are opportunities. Ultimately, you're all moving towards the same kinds of competence for working in advisory or working in education. Um, you know, in, it, had any one of the three of you chosen one of the other options, would you still be happy, do you think? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, I suppose just from my experience, as I said, I was based in the advisory and I've now ended up in an education role. Um, I suppose don't fear um, that you're restricting yourself in any way if you end up in advisory or vice versa. I know people who don't were based in an education center and have ended up in an advisory role now. Um, I suppose there's loads of different options available to you. While I didn't, I wasn't based in an education center, um, I did look to um, get involved in some education work during my master's. And I suppose I also took on um, the module with um, Tomas on agricultural education while up in UCD as well. So um, there's loads of different options av available from the masters and you're no way restricted, whichever way you do end up, I don't think. Yeah. Ryan, I feel like the core subjects. Yeah, I feel like the core subjects are pretty much along the same lines, and the core elements of what you're studying are very similar. Especially given the way I've gone now with an interest in research into that way, then no, in hindsight, either or would have been would have suited. It's all I feel along the same lines, although conceptually different. Yeah, I'd agree with the two lads there as well. Like. Uh, I suppose the the degree the, the, the master's degree itself I suppose is all geared around working with farmers and I suppose it 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 I suppose it'll it'll, uh, it'll help you in, in any industry I suppose wherever you go so I wouldn't be too concerned which one uh, which one which one you, you get into and I I, I wouldn't have changed the one I went into either to be honest with you. Yes, um, and I suppose one of the things that's common across all the programs is there's a high level of peer to peer support, group learning, group projects. Um, how did you find those? Um, I suppose I, uh, I suppose the dreaded work over as well, but yeah. uh, I suppose a lot of the projects we are doing as a group projects were all, I suppose, through Zoom and this kind of a format. And it was sometimes I was used to in college, maybe sitting at a desk somewhere in a lecture or in a lecture hall or something and going through all the stuff, but kind of had to adapt and change a bit. So um, I suppose it's the group work it maybe got a little bit hard at the start, but now you know, I, like I've, I still haven't really met a lot of people, but we still, we still, uh, the group work seems to work well. And uh, yeah, I just found that I found that's probably one thing maybe that was a bit different on the the COVID experience. But hopefully, hopefully that's 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 come and gone now. Like you know, yeah. I just see Monica. There's a question in as well around um, what other career opportunities. So maybe <clears throat> looking at your own classmates and colleagues, where have they ended up, or what type of roles are they in? Maybe specifically to I, I, I mean, yeah. While you're thinking about that, if we look at, because we do keep a track of where the graduates go and, um, you know, probably 50 to 60 percent do continue all the career working in the advisory or education area. But uh, a lot of others go quite, uh, quite diverse from, say, journalism, agribusiness, um, a policy there's quite a few graduates in the department of agriculture um really and i suppose this is one of the things about a master's degree is it equips you with a set of i suppose competencies and ways of thinking that really there's no job that you well, you're not going to be a brain surgeon <laughs> with a master's in ag extension but uh, you know there's there's a lot of opportunities uh, particularly you know in the in public sector, in the private sector, in the non-governmental sector as well. Yeah, Lisa, you were going to come in there, I think. Yeah, um, so just from my class, I suppose, um, as you said, Monica, I, majority probably ended up in Chagas, be that either education or advisory. Um, some have gone on to do further research, so PhD as well. Um, and then journalism is a big one as well, or media um, and the Department of Agriculture as well. But as you said, the skills that you gain are so, um, you can use them anywhere. They're so um, transversible really. So um, there's a huge opportunity. So are there any other questions there that are coming in? 
Um, so I could, if I could just jump in on the clubs right there. Sorry, Monica. Yes. Yeah. There was a, I, I found a huge diversity in the sort of job, um, in the career paths that my sort of friends would have taken. I suppose because we didn't have the Chagas work experience, not as many from my particular group would have ended up with Chagas as the other groups. But there's a massive diversity, but I think the, the common denominator between them all is they're all working with farmers. There's, you know, there's some sales reps, there's some teachers, there's, it, they've all gone different ways, but I think that's the common ground between most jobs so far, is it's working with farmers, and that's really what this equips you really well for. Yeah, and I think maybe picking up on that point, Ryan, you know, we're at a stage in Irish agriculture where, or even in European and global agriculture, where the challenges around climate change, sustainability, reducing uh, costs, uh, resilience in all sorts of ways are really big challenges. So this kind of a master's equips you to work in that space and to, I suppose, help people in you know, being innovative and being creative in finding solutions. So, uh, and there's plenty of work in that space. <laughs> So if there aren't any more questions, I might I have one final question to all three of our well graduates and soon to be graduate. Um, and it is to say, is there anything you wish you knew before you applied that you would like to share with people who are watching and tuning into the webinar today? Um, I suppose I'll just start off on that one. Um, I suppose when you're in the office, um, try to take every opportunity that's um, afforded to you, whether it be discussion groups. And as I said, discussion groups, even with not necessarily your own um, supervisor, but with other advisors, because like that, you're learning a different way of facilitating, a different way of working with farmers. And you're going to pick up small little things from each of those different advisors that you can bring back to your own the way you work and the way you'll um, facilitate different groups. So I suppose don't be reluctant and put yourself out there um, and look, not look for work, because obviously you have your master's and your research project to um, manage as well, but um, definitely put yourself out there and, you know, um, ask the other advisors in the office for, um, can you get involved with their work as well? Okay, so step up to the opportunities, look for them. Yeah, uh, Patrick? Yeah, I suppose I'd be along the same line there as Lisa. Uh, definitely step out of your comfort zone, because there's definitely one thing uh, I noticed straight away. I suppose uh, on the funded masters here with Chagas, you're kind of you're, you're a bit more in the public space, I suppose, and you kind of have to step out of your comfort zone to maybe, as Lisa said there, maybe run a discussion group or meet clients face to face, which you would be, I suppose, in, in other jobs as well. So it's important to take opportunities that come along your way like that, because um, it's it's just it's just a great opportunity and it's 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 it's, uh, it's important not to miss out on them things. So um, anything else? I don't I don't really I, don't, I can't think off the top of my head now that um, that I knew before going in because I suppose I was different. I had the I had the year out to prepare for myself for maybe, but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely a good point that Lisa made there, right? And Ryan, anything you wish you had known? Yeah, uh, don't be afraid of Braid to be the one that breaks the ice. I find because I think the networks. The networking that can be done within your own course is huge. Uh, like the way I've seen my friends all go completely different paths and that has given me different connections in so many areas. And because I had a similar experience with Patrick and the group projects at, over Zoom at the start can be a little bit awkward, but once you just don't be afraid to be that one that breaks the ice and gets the rhythm flowing because once someone starts chatting, you know, you're going to get back up on there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a good way to make friends and connections. And so that's, you know, in the whole area of agricultural advisory work now, we talk a lot about social learning. I think the social learning on a master's program is a huge part of it. So it's not just what you learn, it's who you get to know. And it's that element of also getting to know yourself. So I think on that note, Tomas, is there anything we've forgotten or do you think we've covered most things? Uh, just to emphasize, if people are interested to please make sure and apply um, soon. So applications are opened. You do have the option of applying for all the programs if you want to keep your options open. And um, so to apply for the UCD programs, um, it's ucd.ie forward slash apply for that's for the one year full time. Um, and then for the other programs, details are on the UCD Ag Food homepage. So make sure and check that out. And I suppose the other thing is, you know, if you have any questions or you do need to know any more information about the programs, 
please do reach out to us, send us an email, give us a shout, and we'll be happy to help you with any of those. So thanks very much and uh, have a good rest of the day. Um, and just by, uh, the closing slide is to let you know that there are a range of other graduate taught programs available in the School of Agriculture and Food Science here in UCD, including new master's program on animal science and there's new master's programs on food safety and sustainable food processing. So please do look at the school website and find out about the variety of opportunities that are available. Thank you. <laughs>